So we're out in the backyard. This is my $150 Murray Parkland ride on lawnmower. And for 150 bucks, it just couldn't go past it. It's overall, it's in pretty nice condition. Now compared to what you see for 150 bucks on Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree, this is worth a lot more. But the reason they sold it so cheap was because it had multiple things wrong with it or what they thought was multiple things, but it's all the small things. I was looking for a gum tree late at night when I was on night shift during my lunch break and come across this for 150 bucks. Now, straight away, the red flags went up. I thought it was an actual scam because you see them in this, if you look at what's actually out there for 150 bucks, this looked like an absolute steal and it was. So I sent a message and the next red flag, they responded at about three in the morning. So I thought, oh, it might be a bit of a scam, but I was still confident because I wasn't gonna change any money. If they had said, oh, I've got to buy it, but leave a deposit to yours, something stupid like that online, I would have said no straight away. But I went, they gave me the address, went out, I picked it up and after picking it up, I took it home, put it away and I had to work the following night. Now that gave me the opportunity to download things like service manuals for it, parts manuals, and also look up common issues, which is exactly what I've done. And I found this one had a common issue with the decompression, I think it's called a decompression lever. It breaks in the motor, which makes starting these really hard. So we're gonna run through all the issues with it. So the first thing was, these have, if we lift the bonnet, you look in here and there's the Briggs and Stratton motor. It's the 15 and a half horsepower. So these motors have a very common issue. On the cam loads, there's a decompression lever, I think it's called, and it's a common problem. They tend to break and it makes these things hard to start. Now, I've got a lot of links in the description below of how to fix it. There's people far more experienced than me, but I've got a simple workaround. Because it only cost me 150 bucks, I'm prepared to run the risk of riding it, but if I spent a couple of thousand dollars on it, I probably would have had this fixed straight away. If you go to those links, you'll see it's an easy fix, but for me, I've just got the simple walk work around that I actually get past the decompression stroke and it starts. So I'll go to start it, punch in, choke on, and you see how it locks there? You can get past it. Now the workaround is if you just turn this past the decompression stroke, which you'll feel is really hard to turn, but once you get past that, they're about there. works for 150 bucks. Now, what did I do to get it running, you may ask? Well, let's check it out. Now, initially, I just wanted to put the battery on just to check all the electrics, make sure everything works, and more importantly, check the starter motor. Now, so what I did, I ended up replacing the battery. I just used one of the ones that were fully charged that I know has got plenty of cold circulating current. And this is what I had laying around. While the other one was on charge, I connected this up. The battery was that low, that my trickle chart, my smart charger couldn't even charge. It didn't see a voltage. So what I did, excuse the mess, I got my old school charger, which all it does is pump four amps straight into the battery. It doesn't need to see anything. It just charges, charged it up for a few hours. And then I put this smart charger on it and it's slowly bringing it up. Now, I don't think this battery is gonna be any good, but I'm gonna try it. But if it fails, it's no problem. It just goes straight in the bin. And that's the problem with these ride-on lawnmowers. They tend to, if they're left there for a few months, the battery drains, it's gonna be a punish to start. So a good investment is actually a jump starter pack. The previous owners replaced the starter motor thinking this was the culprit, because as you can see from the initial turn, it didn't want to start straight away. They thought it was an electrical issue. So they replaced the starter motor. So these starter motors normally go for about $140 Australian. And the previous owner thought it'd be a good idea to find a cheaper one. And I don't blame them because I'd be thinking the same way. They found a $70 starter motor that would work on that model. Problem with that is anything gear driven, you really need good quality gears, otherwise, if there's any issue, you'll have an incident like this. So, because you had the perfect storm, broken decompression um, cam, cheap starter motor, and a poor battery, 
this contributed to it breaking. If you had a good if you had a good battery, I don't think this would have broken, but but it did. Over that, or they've used a jump starter and this broke anyway. They re they replaced this broken one with the original one, and then the battery, because it wasn't strong enough, it wouldn't turn over. Again, that perfect storm again. The motor gets stuck as you saw, and they just gave up on it. My initial plan was just to replace the battery to make sure all the electricals work, turn it, just make sure it actually, see if the starter motor actually worked, and it started. So you saw how easy it was to start once you get it past that decompression cycle. All right, back on the ride on lawnmower. Anyway, I took it out for a run and I, I just mowed some thick grass with it across the road. The belt that drives the blades broke. I'm going to order a new one. Now, again, you don't cut corners on these drive belts. You can get them for as cheap as 29 bucks, but I'm going to get the good quality one that's about double that. It's about 60 bucks and it shouldn't give me an issue. And here's the big lesson of this story. On major components that drive things, you should not really cut corners. So I'm talking about chains, sprockets, any sort of gearing. You really shouldn't buy the cheap stuff. In most cases, it's going to give you a grief later on down the track. And I approach it with the cheaper the part, the higher the risk. And is it worth doing, especially if it's quite time consuming, putting that part in. Don't skimp, just get the good quality part that's been recommended and it should give you less hassle. Do I really need a ride on for my backyard? Absolutely not, it's tiny. But I'm gonna take it down the coast because we've got a much larger block and I'm lazy, I don't like pushing a lawnmower, doing a, a, a larger block, so this will do quite nicely. Anyway, that's pretty much it for me. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked the vid. I know it's not my usual one. Don't worry, next videos will be back to my usual programming of bike and car stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next vid.